Greetings, one and all, and welcome to another episode of Time Traveler. Today's guest is the incomparable Coco Chanel. If you're a fashion fan or you're into that kind of like haute couture kind of stuff, this is your episode. So, Miss Chanel was born Gabrielle Bonneau Chanel on August 19th, 1883 in Saumur, France, to parents Albert and Jean Chanel. She was the second to five children, two daughters and three sons. Seven of them lived in a one room lodging in a small town until their mother died at age 32, when Gabrielle was only 11 years old. Her father, who earned a meager existence as a peddler moving from town to town, could not sustain both himself and the children. So he sent his sons into farm labor and the girls into a convent orphanage in Aubazin. In the convent, Gabrielle was raised by nuns in a strict environment and was taught basic life skills like sewing, which was to become her life's work and passion. Once she was age 18 and too old to remain at the convent, Chanel went to a boarding house for Catholic girls in Moulin. Gabrielle found work as a seamstress, but soon became drawn into the cabaret life and began singing at a club called La Rotonde in Moulin for cavalry officers. Her fellow performers lovingly began to call her Coco, which some say was a reference to the word cocotte, meaning a kept woman or a prostitute. She liked the nickname and it eventually stuck. In 1906, Chanel began working in a spa resort in Vichy. She hoped for a stage career, but her singing voice was not up to it and was forced to find other work. While in Moulin, Chanel met an ex-cavalry officer named Etienne Balsan, who also happened to be a textile heir. At age 23, she became his mistress. She lived with him in a chateau for three years, enjoying a rich life full of indulgence. They had a tremendous social life that was extravagant, replete with wild parties, and decadence of all kinds, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> Etienne showered Chanel with gifts of expensive jewelry, and some rumored that she had an illegitimate child, which was raised as her sister's son, but that cannot be confirmed. In 1908, Chanel started an affair with a friend of Etienne's named Captain Arthur Edward Boy Capel. That was his nickname, Boy. He was a member of English aristocracy, and he quickly put his little Chanel into a luxurious Parisian apartment he funded Chanel's millinery business and helped her acquire her first two shops. Although their affair lasted nine years, Capel was never faithful to Chanel and, you know, what can you say? We've seen this before. They traveled together and she hoped he would settle down with her, but he married a fellow aristocrat in 1918. Even after his marriage, he still did not break with Chanel, but his death in December of 1919 quickly put a stop to all relationships. She later reported that losing him meant losing everything. It left a mark on her life. He died in a tragic car accident, unfortunately. He inspired so much of her original packaging and marketing, and he was inextricably interwoven with her business and vision. Chanel began her first business as a designer of hats, but became a licensed milliner in 1910. Her fashions took off and some of her hats were seen in issues of the popular magazine Les Modes. In 1913, Chanel opened a boutique in Deauville where she began selling sporty and casual clothing using basic fabrics like Jersey knit, which became one of her legacies, using it for fashion that was comfortable. In the spring of 1920, Chanel was introduced to composer Igor Stravinsky and choreographer and patron of the ballet, Sergei Diaghilev. She invited Stravinsky to stay with her in her Parisian suburb home after leaving Russia following World War I. He stayed with her for months. She anonymously donated a large sum of money so that Stravinsky could premiere his Ballet Russe production of The Rite of Spring. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It'll creep you out for sure. <laughs> and it's pretty amazing. Chanel became obsessed with designing costumes for the ballet, and she did so from 1923 until 1937. 
In 1922, Chanel met businessmen Bader and Wertheimer, who were interested in selling Chanel No. 5 in department stores. They built a partnership that took Chanel 20 years to dissolve in order for Chanel to have full control over her perfume label and distribution. Chanel had a strong friendship with Misha Sert, wife of Spanish painter Jose Maria Sert. They had a bond that only kindred spirits have, but they also shared a bit of a drug habit. Drug abuse, in fact. By 1935, Chanel was using morphine on a daily basis. She maintained a morphine and cocaine habit to the end of her life. In 1923, Chanel was introduced into British high society by meeting some influential friends whose circle revolved around Winston Churchill. In Monte Carlo that year, she met Hugh Richard Arthur Grossvenor, the Duke of Westminster, known to his friends as Bendor. Don't ask me. He lavished wealth on Chanel and gave her a home in the prestigious London Mayfair district. They were together for 10 years. When they asked her why she didn't marry the Duke, she responded by saying, there have been several duchesses of Westminster. There is only one Chanel. During the 1930s, Chanel began her clothing campaign of less is more, reflecting her changing emotions, and she gave up on her reinvention of the little black dress, which she undertook in the 1920s. Although Chanel felt that Hollywood was a vulgar place, she received offers while in Monte Carlo in 1931 to design costumes for Samuel Goldwyn. Her clothing appeared on actresses like Gloria Swanson and Greta Garbo, among others, and she eventually ended up moving on to the French film scene, where she felt her designs were much more appreciated. Chanel was mistress to many influential men in her time, but she never married. She was instrumental in freeing women from corsetry in the 1920s and innovating the way that women felt in their clothing, finally designed by a woman. Chunky bracelets and multiple strands of pearls that were seen on Chanel in every photo. The pinnacle of feminine beauty. Well, you know, at least that's a majority opinion, or Chanel's opinion at the very least. Despite this, her clothing started to lose popularity as World War I approached. She closed her shops during the war, claiming a patriotic motivation, and she became even closer with elite members of society that had Nazi sympathies. Chanel was being implicated as a spy and openly shared anti-Semitic views while mixing in political circles. She began a serious relationship with Baron von Dinklage, known as Sparrow. Why do all these guys have nicknames? while he was a German diplomat in Paris. Too many details to fit in this video, really too many. I've had to omit quite a bit. <laughs> so in 1944, she was interrogated by the Free French Purge Committee to find evidence of Nazi collaboration. Did you ever imagine such a thing for Coco Chanel? All right, maybe you already knew. I don't know, but this is interesting stuff. She indeed had participated in some, you know, nefarious kind of strange things, but they couldn't provide enough information to hold her at that time. She was released and moved to Switzerland in 1945, where she lived with Dinklage part of the time. Her villa on the French Riviera would eventually be sold in 1953. Post-war fashion was becoming a man's world with the rise of designers like Dior and Balenciaga, she called their cinched waist, stiffened jackets, and padded shoulders illogical and decided that it was time for her to emerge in her role as a fashion diva once again. In 1954, at over 70 years of age, she launched a comeback collection containing the infamous squared-shouldered cardigan jacket, patch pockets, white cuffs, and perky collars. She lived in the Hotel Ritz for her final 30 years of life, eventually living alone with a maid. In 1971, Chanel was 87 years old and exhausted. Even so, she was trying to prepare her spring catalog on the afternoon of January 9th. She decided to go for a long drive and realized that she wasn't feeling very well, so she went home to bed. She announced to her maid, you see, this is how you die. She did not wake up from that nap, dying on January 10th, 1971. At Chanel's funeral, her fashion models took up the front pews at the church and her coffin was smothered in white flowers 
so much like the pearls she wore most of her life. Her grave is in Switzerland, her final place of residence. Coco Chanel's designs are timeless and continue to influence the fashion world. Her company brings in billions of dollars in revenue each year in sales of the annual clothing line, from the Chanel bag and the little black dress of the 1920s to the modern but casual pantsuit to evening wear and her own jewelry line. She is still alive in the fashion world. I have one more interesting fact that happened after her death. Um, in 2014, among other various books that were written to kind of expose her secret life, in 2014, French intelligence released documentation of Chanel's role in World War II as a member of German military intelligence. Yes, it's true. She was heavily involved in the plan for Germany to take control of Madrid, Spain. She was even said to have been selected as a messenger between the Third Reich and Churchill to deliver a message of peace, so air, in air quotes, so that no one could say that Hitler had not attempted peace with the Allies. The Chanel representatives denied her connection to the Nazis after accounts were published, but friends of Chanel would vouch that she was in fact a Nazi sympathizer. So, a uh, totally surprising story today, right? When you look at Coco Chanel, you may not be thinking the things that I have uncovered here. Well, I haven't uncovered them. It was just facts. So, I hope you're enjoying this video. Her apartment is kind of a little bit more, uh, I don't know, lived in and kind of a lot of stuff is going on in here. There's definitely a bar because she definitely likes to party. So it's a different take and there's a few pieces in here that are a little bit cutting edge for the period. You know, like she was keeping her eye on the future and the trends that were to come, just like in her clothing lines. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the build. As always, I thank you for watching, for being here with me. I really hope you enjoy it. And I hope you're all happy, safe, and healthy and that you have a beautiful day.